Hello and welcome everyone to Malaika, the talk show for Christian African women. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned for today's topic. And today we are talking about how to be content in singlehood. We've got with us a bunch of lovely ladies who will help us to talk about this matter. Mama Audrey, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Rose, for having me. Wonderful. And we have our lovely guest, Lady Nadesh. Thank you so much for being with us on the show today. Thank you, Rose, for having me. It's really a pleasure to be with you. Wonderful. And Zodwa, thank you for joining us as you will give us info on the ground on what's taking place in Southern Africa. Thank you, Rose. Great to be here. Wonderful. And Jackie will be giving us our overview. Thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure. Great to be here. And so as we continue today, there's so much that we have in store for you. And this topic is something that affects a lot of women out there. But before we get into further detail, let's get our overview from Jackie. So Jackie, what do you have for us today? Yes, I have quite a few things about singlehood. Um, how to be content in it. We've all heard this statement or question. So why haven't you been married? You know, no one's good enough for you? <laughs> well, just why? 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 Mm. What's, your standards are probably too high. What's the problem? This shows the stigma that there actually is in this world around being single. Even two days ago, I was speaking to someone and I mentioned someone that was unmarried and much older. And the first thing was, but why? <laughs> <laughs> why? And this is actually all across. So this is a very interesting topic that we're talking about today because it deals with many people out there that have questions about singlehood. Yeah. What, is, what does singlehood mean, actually? It means the state of being unmarried, mm -hmm. simply that. Though today we do have many people that stay together and they're not married. Mm -hmm. so that eliminates this part. Some people have romantic relationships, they don't classify them as single. We'll talk about that in the Christian context, Mama Audrey later on. There's also an assumption that to be single means you have to be unhappy, something wrong in your life. So can we actually be content in singlehood or not? Another question to be answered. Some people also prefer to remain single for whatever reason they have and many report as I've read to have a good quality of life mm -hmm. in their singlehood. In Namibia I have a statistic for you um, they, about cohabitation where they live together and they haven't been married. It has increased mm -hmm. since 1992 amongst those that are 30 years and older and the odds are higher in urban areas than those in rural areas. Mm -hmm. Lots of people cohabit there. In Zambia, I was reading a national newspaper from Zambia the other day, and I found that 37.7% had never been married. Mm. That's interesting. As opposed to 2013 now, uh, it's classified now of men, the difference between men and women. There were more men that were unmarried. We had 44% mm. men unmarried and 28% of women that were unmarried. I'll give you a quick uh, definition. You might think, what is stigma? What does that mean? So quick definition of what stigma actually means. It's a strong, strong burning feeling or disapproval that most people in a society have about something, especially something that they think is unfair. Mm -hmm. Is being single unfair? <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll <laughs> soon find out if it's unfair. Um, and my last definition, also definition on stigma. So stigma is a perceived negative, negative attribute that causes someone to devalue or to even think less mm -hmm. of a person. Yes. The value of the person, who the person actually is, mm -hmm. because of the stigma that someone has towards them, they think they're not as much of a person as the other person would be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Yes. For sure. If you're married, more value. Single, less value. Less, less value. value. I'll end on that note. Thank you, Jackie. You're welcome. So many interesting attributes there with regards to singlehood, but I'm sure there's more interesting things that happen in Southern Africa. Auntie Zotz, would you mind to enlighten us further with regards to that? Yes, Rose, this is really a hot topic because for many girls, I think growing up between, from 12 years old, we start talking about getting married. 
I'll be honest, even my daughter shocked me the other day. She's 13 and she's <laughs> telling me about the dress she's going to wear. <laughs> so it's, it's a, we have this romantic idea mm -hmm. that I'm going to grow up, go to school, finish school, have my career, then get married. It's part of the order of when the When I day. was in school, I remember for 30 minutes, I was sitting, instead of writing, studying, anyway, I was sitting and we're discussing our dresses. Oh, exactly. wow. Bridesmaids dresses, <laughs> what dress am I going to wear? What is he going to wear? What are the little kids going to wear? Everything planned out. And I wasn't even 18 yet. Exactly. So for all girls, this is the idea. And so what happens now is that we build up this dream and then when it doesn't happen, then we disappoint. Mm. So we have a lot of young adults that are in that category where now they're looking at the clock and the family society expects mm. a young African woman mm -hmm. to be married by a certain age, yes. have children at a certain age, mm. and you told the clock is ticking. Yes. Watch the time, it's going because there's an expectation for grandchildren at a certain time. Yes. <laughs> so for a young person, it's like constantly bombarding them mm. all the time. Then Especially Ed, girls, I suppose. Yeah, of course. Girls. Actually, for men in Africa, it doesn't matter what age you are. You mm. can be 40 and marry a young 18-year-old. That's mm -hmm. not a problem for them. But for women, when you now hit your 30s, it's another story altogether. Mm. Mm -hmm. And what happens now is coupled with this is social media. Mm. Yes. Every advert, everything they see on, on Facebook, Twitter, everything, it's throwing at them <laughs> sexuality. Couples mm. are always being thrown at them all the time. So it breeds a desire also to be with a partner or to yes. be with somebody. Mm. Yeah. So now with all that being thrown at you, family telling you this, yeah. um, social media telling you that, and mm. you yourself exactly. expecting something to happen, yes. yeah. then it's, it's like a catastrophe. So what mm -hmm. do I do? Yes. Yeah. So it's, it's a, it is a really big issue. So it would be nice to hear from Mama what the story is. Mama, what's the story? <laughs> yes. I mean, is it's it possible? <laughs> There's too much happening. There's too much influence. So is it really possible to be content in being single? Okay, we're speaking now uh, in terms of Christianity. Yes. Let's come back to reality. Yes. Okay. Uh, of course, in the world, I can understand everything Auntie Zods has said yes. because it's a reality. There's competition among yes. girls. Yes. There is pressure from family. There is maybe some parents want to get rid of their daughter because it's so much to care and to look after. There are so many things that come into it. But when it comes to Christians, this is another story altogether. Whether we are married, we are single, we are young, we are less young, our joy should be found in Jesus. Exactly. Yes. And not in the fact that we are married or not married. And if we make a little survey, maybe among many Christian women who are married, mm -hmm. they will tell you it was not the best thing, <laughs> the best idea. They want to go and back to singlehood. Exactly, <laughs> they would <laughs> like, <laughs> the they, they, dream, yeah. they dream about the days where they were free, they yeah. dream about that and now they've got a baby crying here, yeah. a, a child yeah. got to pick up at school, the husband putting demands on their lives, mm -hmm. they don't, they don't belong to themselves anymore. Their lives exactly. is given all day. Yeah. So I think that we can be totally satisfied in single word if we've got our eyes on the right place, in the right place. If we are in the flesh and we are influenced by the world, and I'm sad to hear as well that even in churches, we've got parents who put that kind of exactly. pressure exactly. on their daughters That's true. and who end up into the wrong kind of relationships and probably end up being um, miserable all their lives. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that should, the mm -hmm. church should have nothing to do with this. We, the Lord has removed us from the kingdom of darkness. Yes. We are now in the kingdom of his dear son. We are, re we've been redeemed, we've been forgiven. We live in the new kingdom where Jesus is king yes. and the Lord doesn't say anything like this. Our joy, our peace, our fulfillment is in Christ. He's not in these things. Of course, say yes to the dress. Yeah. <laughs> we know the story. Yes. Uh, say yes to the dress. Yes. And as Jackie was saying, you know, 
How come? Why? Yes. So many questions. Yes. You're my friends, and you know, you've heard it so much yes. that you end up asking yourself these questions exactly. without having an answer, yes. and probably turn on your side, on yourself, and starting blaming yourself exactly. or finding yourself not good enough, or this or that. And yet, the Lord might have a great plan for you, yes. and the husband is waiting behind behind the door. Yes. It's not just time. Yes. Yeah. And you're not ready yet. Yeah. You're, you've not uh, formed in yourself enough to be able to take that responsibility. And the Lord's got other things for you mm -hmm. and there's no rush, you know. So personally, I don't think uh, there is any, I know many girls who are single and, and happy to be so. <laughs> and uh, I even heard someone preach one day, said to the single ladies or men, please, do enjoy your freedom yeah. while you still have it. Still, yeah. mm. true. Because yeah. then yeah. when you look back, you said, if I knew, I wouldn't have. I, I wish. Yes, I, I didn't rush. Happen. I wish. Mm -hmm. But all depends on the plan of the Lord in his time, in his calendar, and things work out together for good mm. for all those who love the Lord. So I think at this point, we can take the opportunity to hear from the single lady in the house. I'm the only one. <laughs> wow. But not only one, only one here. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. <laughs> there's a lot more. <laughs> to clarify. So Nadej, you know, as Auntie Zod has mentioned, there's so many things that bring about the lack of contentment in singlehood. What are the challenges that you as a single woman have faced? It was very similar to what um, Jackie said earlier on as the whys, why you're still not yes. married, why you're still single, you haven't found your, your perfect prince or things like that. Yeah. So I had a lot of questions from my uh, family, from my friends, uh, even people in the, in the church questioning why I'm still single. Yes. And just to do like a little uh, retrospective of my single life, when I was 20, 20, 22, 23, I met with the Lord and in my heart it was clear I'll get married one day. Uh, just to mention that I'm coming from um, a family that experienced divorce. Okay. So um, it's only when I met with the Lord that the Lord reconciled me with marriage. Mm. Understanding that is this is part of his plan and this is something good. Mm. And it's not because I had a bad experience with my parents that it means Amen. it's yeah. necessarily a exactly. bad something. Exactly. So he reconciled me with that. And so when I was in my 20s, I was hopeful and faithful. Yeah. I was like, yes, Lord, yeah. I'm serving you. I know you, you, will, you will bring the right one to me. Mm -hmm. And then I reached 30 something mm -hmm. and there was still nothing. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> That is a nothing. Right. No, but if, if it's it, it, we can't say you didn't have options. Ah, yeah, okay, okay. You <laughs> turned them down. <laughs> she has okay. an inside story. Yes. <laughs> Mama Audrey has some insights. Okay, I had some options, but I didn't really feel like it's that option is for me. And uh, and yeah, that is absolutely right. But so I waited because I was hopeful to to find someone very specific, mm -hmm. and and so I reached my thirties and I was still single and my friends were going to their second babies and the, you know, they were happy and, and excited for this new life. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, Lord, what's happening with me? Yes. Is there something wrong with me? Yes. Am I too picky? Why? 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 Yeah. <laughs> the why, why question came back to you. Exactly. <laughs> and I can say that I went through several seasons yes. because honestly, um, being single in your twenties it has nothing to do with being single in your 30s. It's, it's different. It's very different. Yeah. And the expectation and the pressure yeah. uh, from the family, the friends is different. And your, even your own pressure. Yes. Because as you mentioned, I think, uh, Auntie Zod, there's a, a clock ticking. Yes. Yes. Biologically, you, you kind of feel that you are ready to be a mom. You're ready mm -hmm. to, to have a house, to, to take care of someone, you know. Yes. And the someone is not there and the yes. kids are not there. And you know you don't have a lot of, a lot a lot of, of time. time. Mm -hmm. So... I kind of started to have a pressure yes. and to feel that pressure. And uh, some people told me, maybe you're not praying enough. Mm. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe you're not fasting enough. <laughs> Go up on the you're mountain. Not, exactly, you're not spiritual enough. Yeah. You know? if, you, if you do this and do that, you will meet the right one. You don't have enough faith. Yes. And so you kind of start to, to serve the Lord in that, with that motivation, yeah. thinking, okay, I'm going to be... Pressure. Yeah, with yeah. that pressure. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and kind of thinking, okay, I need to be the good Christian girl so, yes. so that it will be easier for me to meet the, the right one. Yeah. So I ended up in that um, sphere. in that sphere, and 
ended up with the wrong relationship and I got engaged and uh, it was the wrong guy for me definitely. We were on two separate uh, paths and ways and uh, views of Christianity so it became very clear as we went, we, we uh, got along and we started to chat with each other that we were not having the same views um, yes. as far as Christianity is concerned. Mm. So I had to I prefer to um, to cut off the engagement than to continue and to have a divorce at the end of the marriage. Praise yes. the Lord. Yes. So yeah. I yeah. am really grateful for the Lord to really uh, yeah, for, sure. for opening my eyes at the right time so that I didn't end up divorced as my parents. Mm -hmm. yes. And so that's a blessing in itself. And so after that, the, the biggest part was to go back to that status of being single. Yes. Because of course I knew that it was the right decision, but mm -hmm. then I knew somehow that that building, it's like you've, you've started to build something yes. and then you're back to ground zero, yes. back to your previous status. Mm -hmm. So that was really hard because it was like, Lord, whew, I'm going to be alone again. I'm going to be lonely again because yeah. trust me, it's very hard when we are single, it can be very hard because mm -hmm. people that are uh, uh, married, they have their kids, they have their family. They, so they don't even realize that. But somehow mm -hmm. in, in the church, we kind of find ourselves apart, isolated, yes. whether we want it or not. We, we, we will find ourselves in a, either with the circles of the single ones. But um, I remember having a conversation with a sister telling me, um, actually, she made me feel like um, being married is the optimal uh, goal, goal mm -hmm. for exactly. me as yeah. a woman. Yeah. And in other words, yeah. I was less of a woman if I wasn't <laughs> married. Uh, yeah. And I, I remembered that it, I didn't feel good about this. I was, mm. I was worried. I was troubled. Mm. And I went before the Lord and I was like, Lord, is that so? Mm. You made me a woman. You, mm. you made me this way. Exactly. And actually, yeah. wom woman is womb men. So he prepared everything inside of me for me to be a, a mom one day. Mm. And Etc. Etc. And the Lord showed me something that mm. is very, it's it's it has enlightened my Christian uh, walk. Yes. Honestly, mm. He showed me that in terms of value, Amen. had exactly the same value yeah. as exactly. any other exactly. uh, Christian, Christian. Uh, married, married or unmarried. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And that He paid the same price. Exactly. For all of us. exactly. So the price He paid for me, He paid the same price for, for them. And that was the first enlightenment. I was like, yes, Lord. Yes. So I, I'm not less of a woman if I'm not married. And also to, to deepen my relationship with him, I was like, okay, Lord, what do you want me to, 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 to experience or to learn or to know during this time? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's going to be forever. Maybe it's going to be for, just for a short while. I want to take, make the most of Amen. this time. Mm -hmm. And so I went deeper in my relationship with my heavenly father, yes. getting to know him better and also to have my security in him yes. and not having my security on a husband or on yes. a house yes. or, you know, on a status yes. or on a status on Facebook, like, exactly. oh, oh, yeah. Mrs. Yeah. So-and-so, yeah, exactly. you know? Yeah. With or, pay. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> or to have nice pictures on, uh, on Instagram yes. because now we're married or stuff yeah. like that. Yes. But he showed me very clearly that without um, removing the fact that it's, it's true, it's tough. It can be very tough sometimes. But Christian work is not an easy walk. But the married also, life as well can be also, tough. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So both lives have their, their challenges. Yeah. But the end result, what he showed me very clearly, the end result of Christianity <laughs> is to finish the race. Exactly. Yes. Whether I'm yeah. married yeah. or not married, yes. I need to make sure that I finish exactly. the race. Hey, man, we clap. <laughs> That's and that key. is what is sustaining me yeah, today because yes. I'm not serving him to have a husband. Yes. I'm serving him because I love him. Yes. Yes. Because he died for me. He, he made that huge sacrifice for me that no one will ever make exactly. for me. Exactly. So that's the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing and yes. I'm serving him. And in the meantime, you can say Jesus is your husband, is yeah. your father, is your he's brother, everything. is everything to yeah. you. Yeah, he's my everything. Can I add on? You're talking about singleness, right? Yes. Focusing your eyes on Jesus yes. rather than on being, mar being married. I was speaking to someone lately and she was talking about her daughter who had been married. This is in the United States. And they had recently gotten a divorce. And the problem was uh, one of them was saying to the other, you weren't there when I needed you mm. and vice versa. 
the man would say to the woman, but you weren't there when I needed you. So even in marriage, there's a tendency of looking yes. towards one yes. another and not fake yes. focusing yep. on Jesus. Yep. If your focus is then on Jesus, then you wouldn't have that issue, whether you're married or whether you're single. Yep. Yep. If you focus on the married person, divorce. Yep. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it is so important, uh, you know, what, when you said the, the clock is ticking. Yeah. Yes. The important thing of the clock ticking is the 40 bar. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Because once you get to that 40 bar, you know that it's, it's not very, it's not finished. Kind of. No, no, no. <laughs> Come on, Nadej. Come on, Nadej. <laughs> but hope, you have definitely <laughs> passed the biological the thing of, of being a mother, okay. of bearing children. Yes. yes. But we can always adopt. Okay. We can always have a family. Mm -hmm. yes. It's not the end. Yes. yes. But it's just the world way of thinking, mm -hmm. yes. which has been impacting mm -hmm. our lives so much that without realizing it, we are falling under the pressure of the world exactly. and the pressure of stigmas yes. and the pressure of understanding and the pressure of of, of I don't know, society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. And also the pressure of family. Mm -hmm. yes. Exactly. And We're falling under all mm -hmm. kinds of pressure mm -hmm. yes. instead of saying, Lord, yes. whatever your plan is for my life, yeah. Yeah. you know, I, will be I want mm -hmm. exactly that plan. Yes. And I don't want anything else. Mm -hmm. I want this plan. Mm -hmm. I was in South Africa, it just came back to me. I was in South Africa in. Um, it's quite far, it was 1969, in, in, in the 70s, and I was not married. And there was a young boy who was quite in love with me, so I'm telling you, it's very secret. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> They're all coming out now. With us. And, with us. Uh, and um, I was not really interested, because already, uh, Mika and I, in our hearts, we knew, even we were in the world, that we were reserved for each other, Mickey was studying. Mm -hmm. And my, my, my aunt always come to tell me, you know, uh, want to show me uh, accidents on uh, motorbikes because it, this guy had a huge motorbike and we <laughs> used to go everywhere. Yeah. And Perfect. one day she came to me, uh, on the Saturday, came to me and said, let's go and have an ice cream, you know? And I said, no, I'm busy, I didn't go. And the guy went and the next day my aunt came to my room and she showed me a uh, newspaper thing mm. and I realized that he left me he went and picked up the girl across the road mm -hmm. they went on their bicycle they cross a, a, a car across the a red light mm -hmm. the girl on the back of the car of the mask was killed on the spot mm -hmm. no. and it could have been me yeah yeah if I was so focused on marriage yeah. mm -hmm. and not wanting to lose because he was one of the it was a top sportsman in South Africa. Mm. And if I was just there mm. and having this at the back of my mind, mm. being so focused on, I need to have somebody mm. who's successful, who's this and that, mm. I could have lost my life. Exactly. Mm. So we cannot fall under the pressure of people when it mm. comes to our life. In the book of Corinthians, he says, Paul says, you have been redeemed at a great price. Exactly. Mm. Do not become slaves to men. Exactly. Do not bow to principles of the world. Do not bow to what people think, say. Mm -hmm. You live your life, you have been set free. Yes. Enjoy your freedom exactly. and live it fully exactly. in Christ. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and this is what we see with Nadej. I can yeah. see she's a very happy girl. Yes. <laughs> very happy girl. And you know, it, it costs courage. You know, to yes. cancel a wedding, yes. to cancel a wedding day, to cancel invitations. Mm -hmm. But that is so wise and so courageous. But today, is there anybody who looks back and said, oh Lord, I thank you for helping me in that decision. Oh yes. It's, it's Nadej. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I, I want to, I'm sure many will be encouraged by her not to look around and you know, Jesus has saved you. Mm -hmm. He's got a plan for you, Definitely. with or without a man, whatever exactly. it is. Exactly. Serve him with all your heart and, yes. exactly. you know, it's not, the end, it's not the end of everything. That's exactly. It. For me, something speaks to me about what Nadej says, the value. Yes. That you're not less valuable yes. because you, you, you're single, mm -hmm. but how the Lord values us, mm. no matter what state we are. Exactly. And finishing the race, mm. that's the goal. Yeah. Exactly. So for me, I think for many viewers, that's very important. We f we're here mm. to finish the race. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. And this is such an interesting topic. I think we could speak until the chickens come to roost. <laughs> but unfortunately, Mama, if you could just give us the final word with regards to this topic, what is your encouragement? What hope does the Lord give to the, to the Christians out there who are single?
first of all, do not panic. Yes. Yeah. There is no rush. I've known sisters who have received an, uh, a proposal to marry when they were 50. Mm. Yes, so, yes. And they are serving the Lord with their husband who is 65 or whatever yeah. with all their hearts. Mm -hmm. So there's no panic. Mm. Number two, uh, I would say, don't despair. Mm. Uh, it's never too late. Mm. If you serve the Lord with all your heart and you want to really be a blessing and this is your heart, it will, if, it's, if it's what you need to serve Him, he will provide. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't happen, it's not a train smash. Yes. It's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. Make the most of your life the way you are. You know, so many people who are not married can be a blessing. Mm -hmm. People who are married can be a blessing. Yes, exactly. People who are not married can be a blessing. Yes. So the Lord, you know, for God, it's not that important. Mm -hmm. God created marriage. He yes. is the one who yes. initiated marriage. He said it's not good for a man to stay alone. Yes. He said rather marry than burn, mm. you know. But if it's not your case, you can't force situations. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't because you're thirsty, drink the first water from the first stream that you see, whether it's clean mm -hmm. or not Dirty, clean, yeah. yes. and just marry at any cost. No, you don't yeah. have to. If people want to think, you know, we've got a French saying that says, let the, the dog bark mm. as the caravan goes by. Yes. Let people say, mm. you know in your heart mm. that you serve a faithful God, mm. that you serve a living God, that God has not forgotten about you, yes. He loves you, He hasn't put a red cross on you. Mm. It's not, why? Why? No. <laughs> why? Ask the Lord. Yes. Why? Ask the Lord. I've got like, no answer yeah. for you. Exactly. But what is important mm. is that I'm happy, I'm serving Jesus with all my heart, I'm blessing my brothers and sisters. I'm using the time I have, the extra time, to look after the kids of those who want to serve the Lord yes. and want to go to Bible school or yes. to whatever. Yes. I'm being a blessing. Exactly. Mm. And I'm sure that uh, there's no reason to feel uh, like less value yes. or to feel like neglected or to feel that you're a failure, you're not a failure. Amen. Jesus has made you the way you are and he loves you the way you are and just trust him for your life. And in the meantime, serve him yes. with yes. all your heart. Amen. Ladies, thank you so much for the input that you've brought for us today and our show ends here today. And viewers, there you have it. Thank you so much. And you heard, don't panic, persevere, serve the Lord. Ask the whys, no problem, but your why goes to Jesus because after all, he's the one who created you. He's the one who has the specific plan for your life. Don't go drinking up in wells that may cause you to have diarrhea or cholera. <laughs> so we want to serve the Lord. We want to give our lives to the Lord. And so let's find that contentment in Jesus. That's our first place before we find contentment in men. So till next time, remember, if you want to follow us, we are on Facebook and YouTube. Find the link at the bottom of the page. Thank you so much. Until next time, bye-bye.